Hi, my name is Josh, and today we're going to talk about lists in Python. In this video, you will learn the basics about lists as data structures in Python, including how to change the values of elements in lists, how to combine multiple lists, how to extract part of a list, and how to loop through a list. Lists are a handy way to organize data. Lists surround us in daily life, shopping lists, to-do lists, etc. The idea behind lists is very intuitive. Same here in Python. Lists allow you to easily access data throughout your program. So now let's create some lists. Let me declare a list of integers and name it A. If we type A, Python will return our list. We can also check the data type of A by typing type of A, and we'll see it is indeed a list. One thing we should know about lists is that they can take data of many different types and put them in the same list, a feature not available in some other languages such as Java. Let's demonstrate this. As you can see, List B contains one integer, one character, and one string. Let's talk about how to access each element in your list. We'll use a shopping list analog. In the real world, you would probably write number one milk, number two apple, etc. to indicate the order that you want to buy these things. Well, it's the same in Python. However, in Python, the first element of the list is labeled with a zero, and the second element is labeled with one, and so on. This is important there is a zeroth place. Let's demonstrate this with the list B seen above. Say that you want to know the first element in B is 2. You can simply type B at index 0. Here you can see that the first element actually does correspond to the zeroth place. If you've programmed before, this shouldn't be new. Word of caution though, never type something such as B at index 3 when there are only three elements. Python will not understand this. So as a rule of thumb, when there are n elements in list x, you can only search up to n minus 1 elements before you'll receive an error. Next, I'll demonstrate how to change the values of elements. Again, let's use the shopping list. Let's say instead of buying an apple, you actually wanted to buy a mango. So in real life, you could just cross out apple and write mango. In Python, we can reassign the value of list elements. Let's show you how to do that by changing the first element of b to be 100 instead of 2. Pretty neat, right? You can simply assign the first element, which is the zeroth index of b in this case, a new value. And when you display b again, you can see that the change has been made. You can try this out by yourself and see how it works. Now things get a little bit interesting. Let's say you want to link two lists together and make them a new list. Can we do this? Imagine your roommate comes in and asks you to do his shopping too. So you just use a stapler and staple his shopping list with yours. Well, how would we do this in Python? Let's create a new list D and give it four elements, love, f, 12, and 0 0.4. And right now we want to add B and D together to form a new list G. This isn't difficult at all. We can simply use the plus operator to concatenate two lists. You might be wondering, what if instead of putting two lists together, I just want to use some elements in one list. For example, only the first three elements in G. You can slice lists pretty easily. In the bracket, you can write two numbers separated by a colon. The first one refers to the starting index of extraction, and the second one is the ending index. It is important to note that Python extends extraction one element before the end index. Keep this in mind so you don't end up extracting one fewer element than you intended. Again, the end value specifies the first element that is not in your slice. Let's say you want to take from the third element to the sixth element. You can just write g2 to 6. If you find this a little bit confusing, you can try to create some lists by yourself in practice. Here are a few small tricks for extracting elements in the list. If you want to start slicing at the first element, you can skip writing the 0 and simply write colon 3, which is exactly the same as writing 0 colon 3. Say you want to extract all the way to the end of the list. You can type something like g4 colon which will slice everything from the fifth element to the end of list G. So you want to extract every two elements in the list and skip one in the middle for some reason. Then you can use the step argument. So the third argument actually specifies the step or the distance between extracted elements. Here it's two, and as you can see, it prints every other number in our slice. Here I want to cover how you can perform loops on lists. The most simple loop application on lists might be to print every element in the list. We'll demonstrate how to loop through lists using a for loop, although a while loop can also do this. 
Here I created another variable, counter, and use it to refer to a particular place in the list. Each time when I go through the while loop, I add a 1 to the counter element, and then I increment counter by 1 to get it closer to 10 and look at the next index. We can also use a for loop to sum up the elements in a list. Let's declare a variable named sum and let it equal 0. We'll use a for loop to loop through the whole list, and each time I get to a value, I add its value to sum. Here, the i directly represents the value, so I don't have to do the index method like I did using the while loop. Think about multidimensional lists as lists of lists. You can apply anything you learned about lists to multidimensional lists. When indexing each element, instead of using one bracket, you should use two. As shown in the example, the first one refers to the second row of A, and two refers to the third element of the second row, which in this case is six. So the indexing convention of two multidimensional lists is first bracket, row, second bracket, column. Keep in mind, when you want to create a multidimensional list, the list doesn't have to have the same length in each dimension, as shown here. See, B has two elements in the first row, three elements in the second row, and only one element in the third row. When you want to loop through a multidimensional list, you have to use as many nested loops as the number of dimensions.